you know, I think you can give an argument for it, but there's costs associated with it. I mean, it takes time, effort, planning, uh, so there are costs. And uh, you could say the same about uh, turning the lights on in the evening. I mean, we all do it, but there are costs. In fact, that's one of the things that's contributing to uh, the massacre of animals. So we live in a world in which we make choices and they have costs. And you have to then make decisions about which ones are the right ones for you. What's the uh, opportunity cost for doing something? So should you live in the dark, say? Should you walk instead of taking a bus? I mean, questions arise all the time. Veganism, I think, is like that. For someone so intelligent to say something so dumb is just mind-boggling. First of all, it only requires time and effort in the beginning. You have to do a little research and learn some new recipes or whatever, but once you adjust, maybe after a month or so, shopping and cooking takes no extra time or effort. It takes no time or effort to not go to the zoo or aquarium. Dealing with the occasional inconvenience of living in a non-vegan world is an incredibly small price to pay considering what the animals go through. Have some perspective. He is appealing to futility by comparing eating meat to turning on the lights. Of course our demand for electricity places some burden on the environment, which indirectly harms animals. But turning on a lamp does not cause direct harm. Harm is not inherent in the production of electricity. It is an indirect result of the way in which we harness energy. Eating animal products causes both indirect and direct harm. Harm is inherent in the production of animal products. Veganism is about minimizing harm to animals. It is impossible to cause zero harm, but we should strive to cause the least amount of harm. An honest cost-benefit analysis will show a monumental difference between flipping on a light switch and ordering a chicken sandwich. I am perturbed by two questions of moral philosophy. The first one is concerning Peter Singer. Is he right on animal rights? Well, just out of curiosity, uh, do you kill insects? Like mosquitoes when they're bothering you? Or... Do you think that uh, when mosquitoes are carrying malaria, uh, we ought to develop a, a means to kill them off? Well, question. Okay, that's part of the answer. You can pursue. Sure, animals should have rights, but uh, none of us believe that animal, including Peter Singer, that uh, animals should have the rights of human beings. And there are good reasons for that. Uh, the rights don't exist in a vacuum if you're talking about moral philosophy. The rights are associated with responsibilities. Uh, we don't attribute any responsibilities at all to other uh, uh, animals, do we? I mean, we don't say that a, a lion has to be sent to the gas chamber if it kills a gazelle, let's say. No, they don't have responsibilities. And that, of course, if in moral philosophy, now just abstract discussion, uh, relates to the question of what their rights are. And uh, you can, I mean, they should have rights. So for example, it's a step forward in our general uh, kind of moral development that uh, uh, animals are not uh, subjected to uh, torture in the way they were just a few years ago. So in Britain and the United States there, and now constraints on uh, the torture, what we call experiment, torture of uh, uh, at least animals that are closer to us, like primates, uh, than there were 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, so yes, we're developing some sort of conception of uh, rights, but I don't think anyone thinks that animals have the rights and responsibilities of human beings. He's right in suggesting that most other species, especially mosquitoes, should not have the same rights as humans, for the same reason children do not have the same rights as adults. But bringing up mosquitoes is a red herring. Slapping a mosquito on your arm is self-defense. Sexually exploiting cows for dairy is not. The argument presented by Singer is that animals deserve basic rights, such as the right to not be exploited and murdered for a hamburger. I'd like to ask you whether you think natural, uh, natural right applies to non-human animals. 
In an interview from 2010, you acknowledged that there exists a moral case for vegetarianism, but at a recent talk at University College London, you claimed that animals cannot have the same rights as humans because, lacking reason, they cannot be considered to have responsibilities. Can you clarify what you mean by this? As you likely know, many anarchists and anti-authoritarians today consider vegetarianism and veganism essential to the project of reducing humanity's domination over nature. That makes sense, but that's separate from the question of whether animals have the same rights as humans. Anim it's a fact that animals don't have responsibilities. We can't overlook that. I mean, if I have a dog, well, the dog has no responsibilities. Well, maybe I'd like it to bark when a, a criminal comes, but I can't say the dog's guilty if it didn't do it. So it's a fact that animals don't have responsibilities. Uh, responsibilities are related to rights. This does not say you should murder animals, uh, but it's a recognition of reality. And in fact, uh, you know, vegetarianism or veganism, I think, has a moral basis, uh, but uh, so do lots of other things. Uh, like uh, when you got here, uh, you either drove or took public transportation, I meaning you used energy. Mm -hmm. uh, that harms the environment. You made a choice. Your choice was to harm the environment in order to come here so we could have this discussion. But we're making choices like that every moment of the day. Well, one of the choices has to do with uh, whether uh, you know, people who, say, in uh, the countries where they, there is meat but not much else should they eat it. That's another choice. Uh, we have our own choices. We're always, we're, we can't overlook the fact that we are constantly making choices which have negative effects. And uh, this is one of them. There's an opportunity cost to vegetarianism. Like personally, I'm not a vegetarian, uh, but the main reason, well, I almost never eat meat, but the reason is just I don't have the time for it. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to, to, to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I just pick up whatever saves me time. Let's review the definition of willful ignorance, shall we? A decision in bad faith to avoid becoming informed about something so as to avoid having to make undesirable decisions that such information might prompt. Willful blindness is a term used in law to describe a situation in which a person seeks to avoid civil or criminal liability for a wrongful act by intentionally keeping themselves unaware of facts that would render him or her liable or implicated. In United States v. Jewell, the court held that proof of willful ignorance satisfied the requirement of knowledge. The appellate court wrote, deliberate ignorance and positive knowledge are equally culpable. Turning your attention away from the ethical problem of animal exploitation because it is too disturbing or because you believe that going vegan would require extensive effort is a prime example of willful ignorance and it does not absolve you from your complicity. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my two previous videos in this series on Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. If you're not vegan and would like help going vegan, check out the resources in the description. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. Uh, when me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no meat now. How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam. When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan, man. How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. Uh,